Okay. How's that? Okay. All right. Good. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know if you uh, muted everybody because I I can have mine live. Well, everybody mute themselves. You're all yeah, burning. I think everybody yeah. better do it. You're only one, so can you mute yourself? Thank you. All right. Uh, I'm going to start drinking during the day. Um, so anyway, um, what I wanted to say was we, I got an email from the rec department. They are not starting any of the exercise classes next week. Okay. So uh, I know that uh, Sandy Lang and Susan Reed and Carolyn Goldstein, who teaches Pilates, I believe they were all going to go back live. And that's not happening because of the uptick in cases in Florida now. So I called Seabreeze and they said, until further notice, uh, we're going to um, stop all inside activities in the rec centers. Okay? So that's number one. Number two, sorry, I got something in my eye. Number two is that um, starting, not this weekend, but starting with the yoga nidra class at, uh, at 6 p.m. on Sunday the 11th, right? Whatever, whatever a week from Sunday is, we're going to be required to use passwords. Zoom is not letting us off the hook anymore. We're going to be required to use what they're calling passcodes. I, th I guess they thought we'd be more amenable if they used a different word. So Kat and Clint and Sabine and I got together and we decided that we were all going to use the same password. So that if you guys um, take classes from all of us, you only have to remember one password. I'm going to send out an email, but that password is 112020. Okay, so starting a week from Sunday with the 6 p.m. Yoga Nidra, our classes will require a passcode. Now, if you use, if you get a, a document from Clint, and he doesn't have everybody's email, but I try to pass it along. Uh, the link, if you use the link, the link has the passcode in it, okay? If you go to Zoom and then say join a meeting, you're going to have to have the meeting ID and then the password, okay? So the password is 112020. We'll not be using that until the week from Sunday, and then every class after that will require that same passcode. If you're taking a class from me, Sabine Litton, Kat O'Neill, and Clint Harris, okay? So the four of us. Um, let's see, rec center, passcode. I guess that's it. So we were talking about um, my going to New York. I'm planning on Zooming from New York. Uh, my Airbnb has Wi-Fi. It can't be any worse than the Wi-Fi I have here. Um, so I'm planning on keeping all my classes as is until at least after, right after Labor Day. And then we'll see what's happening with the rec centers, okay? Uh, one thing that uh, I want to mention briefly because it's not all fleshed out yet, but we do, the four of us, the four amigos, have a YouTube channel now. And um, I have a couple of yoga classes up there. I've got about 14 or 15 yoga nidra sessions. All you have to do is go to YouTube and within YouTube, that search box, you type in the space villages space yoga. You're gonna see a little round picture with a little, it's got a picture of a yoga studio inside of it. Um, there's a, a very complicated, it's like a 15 character key that I don't think you guys want to deal with. But what I would ask you is if the channel gets 100 subscribers, uh, YouTube will give us our own uh, URL, our own link. So uh, I'm going to be reaching out and encouraging everybody to go up there. Even if you don't take a class, just subscribe to the channel so that eventually we can get a, a nice, easy URL. I got about a 15 15 character passcode right now with letters, numbers, caps, small letters. It's crazy. Okay. So, 
All right, so I was looking through my yoga classes yesterday, wondering what I was gonna do, and I happened to see a class that I did for a new moon. No, no, a full moon, full moon. So we won't have a full moon for a couple of days. I think it's Saturday or Sunday. Uh, it's Saturday, right? Because the 4th of July, full moon. I mean, it should be a crazy weekend. Um, and so the phase of the moon that we're in now is called uh, waxing gibbeous. <laughs> um, not that we need to know that. So that means that the amount of illumination every night gets a little bit bigger and bigger and bigger until we get the full moon. And then it waxes, of course. And you know, the moon is associated with feminine energy, right? The moon is, um, it's a cooling energy and um, it's mo most often characterized as feminine. So uh, I thought what we do today is do a moon salutation, okay? So in the, in the, uh, in the waxing or the what's called first quarter moon, uh, we may find some challenges. <laughs> we, we all have a lot of challenges and some resistance, but it's our time to take action. It's our time now to take action. And what we want to do is we want to take action and make decisions, but we want to do it from a place of calm, not a place of chaos. So the moon salutation helps us, um, the, the energy of the, of the quarter moon helps us align our energies with the moon, okay? And uh, so the, uh, you know that the sun salutation is called Surya Namaskar, right? And unlike Surya Namaskar, Chandra Namaskar, or moon salutation, is more cooling. The sun salutations give you more heat, they're more fiery, but the moon salutation is supposed to be more cooling, calming, quieting. And it's from this, um, it's from this place that we wanna make decisions and go forward. So let's see if I wanna say anything else about this. Okay. I guess that's it. I got my notes here because I can't remember, you know what. Okay. All right. But we want to make decisions that will ultimately bring about everything that we desire. Okay. All right. Let's start out on our backs. Okay. And you can keep your, uh, the soles of your feet on the, on the uh, mat, or you can spread your legs out long, okay? Let's just flatten our backs against the mat right now. Just land on the mat, dedicate this time and space for yourself. Observe everything that's going on. Let's begin by observing the breath. No need to control it at this point. Just let it flow in and out naturally. Try and breathe in and out through the nose if you can. And it's recommended that in for Chandra Namaskar, that we do not use ujjayi breathing because ujjayi breathing or the ocean sounding breath is a warming breath that brings warmth to the torso. So just breathe quietly, naturally, don't stop breathing, okay? Just relax a little bit here. And picture the lungs in the, in the chest top of the lungs, near the collarbones, the bottom of the lungs, barely touching the surface of the diaphragm. As we breathe in, the diaphragm pushes down or pulls the breath in. The belly rises as the diaphragm wants more room there. As we exhale, the diaphragm comes back up, the belly 
contracts. So picture that miraculous system of spontaneous breathing, automatic system. You do not have to think about it. Let your breath flow through your whole body. Bringing oxygen, moving the lymph around, also providing a focal point for us should our minds become distracted. If you set an intention for your practice, now is a good time to do so. Let it sink into your bones during your class, during your practice. And again, remember that the energy of the new, the first quarter moon is for taking action and being decisive. Where we can make good decisions about manifesting those intentions. Whether your leg is straight or bent, bring the right knee into the chest and just squeeze very gently here. Let the belly contact the thigh, giving the abdominal organs a little stimulus here. Couple rounds of breath. And place the sole of the right foot on the mat. Bring the left foot up. Again, squeezing gently. This is the descending colon side of the body. Nice deep breaths here. Let that belly contact the thigh. Gentle but even pressure. Bringing the thigh into the abdomen. Bring the right leg up to meet the left. You can let go of your hands and just circle the ankles for a moment. Maybe spreading the toes and letting them come back again. A couple rotations and then pause and go the opposite way. Now if you can find a, a more comfortable uh, position for your legs, you could do that, okay? And then come to center and just point and flex. Point and flex a few times. Feel the calf muscles engage. Feel the muscles below the knee and the shin engage when you flex. Okay? Really important to oil up these joints. And then place the feet back down on the mat. Just pause for a moment. Let that natural curve in the lower back come up. Take a breath in and out. And let's look to the knees. Just kind of marching here, or, uh, extending one leg and then the other, gently oiling the knees, letting that synovial fluid thicken up and cushion those knees. Just a couple more on each side. And then bring their feet out to the edges of the mat. Just windshield wiper the knees from side to side. Now, if you want to, you can lift the hip that's up. So when I'm over to the right, I can lift my left hip. When I'm over to the left, I can lift my right hip. Okay, it's up to you. A little bit of hip action here. But we're rolling the femur, the long bone in the top of the side, rolling the femur in the socket, in the hip socket, okay? We're actually rotating the, the ball, the head of the femur in the hip socket. Just one more to each side and then come to center and bring your feet back in. 
bring your arms out to shoulder, um, out from your shoulders, the upper arms perpendicular to the floor. Let's bring the arms up, press the arms together. Use a little uh, pressure in your pectoral muscles on the side of the chest. Okay. Don't bring your uh, uh, hands too close together, especially if you've got shoulder issues. So just warming up the chest area, the elbows, the shoulder, multitasking here. Couple more repetitions. And bring the arms down. Let's do the same thing with our wrists that we did with our ankles. So start some rotations. You can have the, the fingers in a gentle fist or not, it's up to you. And pause, go the other way. Wanna make sure we warm up most of the joints before we do anything else today. And then come to center and just starfish your fingers out for a moment. So just making a gentle fist and then starfish and feel, the, feel those points between the fingers. And then taking uh, both hands at the same time, you can have your, your, your arms down or up. I'm just bringing mine up so you can maybe see my hand a little bit better. And touch the little finger and the thumb together and then the ring finger and the thumb middle finger and thumb, and index finger and thumb, and then go back the other way. So just a little bit of manual dexterity here, keeping those hands nice and young. We'll go back and forth a couple times. If your arms get tired, you bring them down. And then bring the arms down these, uh, to your side and just rock your head from side to side. So if you're, as if you're touching your chin to your shoulder, just warming up the neck. And come to center and just tuck your chin, flatten your lower back against the mat. Feel how that feels. Breathe into the back of the lungs. See if you can really inflate that back body. So maybe uh, practicing a three-part breath here where you inflate the belly, open up the rib cage, and then inflate the whole chest, inflating the back as well. See if you can just feel that in the back. A great portion of your lungs is in the back here. Couple rounds of breath. Expanding the chest, expanding the back. And one more. If you have your, your legs uh, out in front of you, um, just bring your, the soles of your feet to the, to the mat and bring your uh, arms up over your chest, grab the opposite elbow, okay? And bring the, the right elbow to the floor and then the left, okay? Turning your head maybe with your arms a little bit easier than keeping the arms stationary or um, keeping the head stationary. So getting into our whole back here, pull that shoulder open. Be careful, but pull, pull the back of the shoulder open, okay? Now, if you want to, you can uh, windshield wiper your legs in a different direction or the same direction. Well, I don't know if that works or not. Check it out. <laughs> so just bring the knees to the left, the elbows to the right, 
vice versa. Little massage for the lower back. Really getting our shoulders warmed up here. For Chandra, Namaskar. And come to center here and just shake out the hands. And then let's flip over to table, okay? I'm putting my blanket below my knees. Because I got wood floors. And make sure that we stack our bones. So shoulders over elbows, elbows over wrists, hips over knees, and look back through your legs. So put your, bring your feet out so that you cannot see your feet, okay? And let's go into some luxurious cat and cow moves. Inhaling as we go into cow, tipping that tailbone up, watching the cervical spine here. And then exhaling, rounding the back, looking back through the legs. Really open up those shoulder blades and then come back down. Really critical movements, great for posture, great for spinal flexibility. Couple more here. And then come to center, rearrange yourself if you have to. Bring the right leg up and flex the foot. Use the glute muscle to raise the leg just a little, not much. Okay? We're just going to squeeze that glute and raise the leg maybe an inch. Okay? Working on the gluteus maximus, the biggest muscle in the body. And come down anytime you need to. Just maintain some uh, active energy in the arms, pushing away from the mat. And then come to center, cross that right leg over the left leg. Look back over the shoulder for a lateral stretch. Two rounds of breath right here. Bringing the leg back again, flexing that foot, and just using your hamstring now to pull that leg up. Don't use momentum, nice and slow. Nice and slow, feel that hamstring engage. A couple more times. And then lower that right knee to the, to the mat. We're going to go to the other side. Bringing the left foot out, okay? So try and keep the hips uh, level with each other. Remember the active arms and using the glute now. Squeeze the glute to raise that leg. It's a really, really small movement. Okay. Really small movement. You can really feel that glute engage. Couple more here. And then bringing the left foot over the right. Top of the foot on the floor, looking back at that foot. Opening up the left side body. Try not to scrunch the right side body too much. Couple rounds of breath right here. And then bringing that left leg back. Get your arms situated again and pull that heel in. Nice and slow, give yourself resistance on the way down as well as on the way up. Nice 
nice and slow and deliberate. Okay. A couple more times. And bring that leg down. Let's spread our knees wide. Sit right back on your heels. If you can tolerate this position, it's a great stretch for your uh, the tops of your feet. And then what I like to do is try and maintain that point of contact between my buttocks and my heels. It's not easy. Um, and I don't, I don't usually get it, but uh, kind of sneak forward, keeping that butt down there, sneak forward into child's pose. Now I'm not gonna put my head down because of the microphone, but um, you can bring your forehead to the mat, stretch your arms out, come up on your fingertips and open up the armpits. Open up the whole back body. Go back to breathing into the back of the lungs. Nice deep breaths here. One more round of breath in child's pose. And then bringing the legs together, come up into down dog. So I really like the uh, sort of um, the measured approach to down dog. So we keep our knees bent. That allows us to align our upper body with uh, our hands, with our arms, okay? So the knees are bent. The finger pads of the hands are pushing into the mat, shoulder blades come down, and we're looking back through our legs. Now you can bend one leg or up, keep one leg bent and one leg straight, walk the dog, or you can come up, come into plank. Now I was doing some research yesterday and the one author was saying that our feet in plank should be where our feet and hands are in down dog. You may want to check that out. Okay, so my stance was really short, so to speak. And here I'm going from down dog to plank without moving my hands or my feet. Okay. Just something to think about, okay? Don't have to. This feels awkward for me. I usually have a shorter stance, but maybe, maybe that wasn't so great. <clears throat> and then walk the hands and feet together. Come on down and forward fold. So you know my, my shtick about the forward fold, right? Patience and acceptance. Patience because we want to achieve the maximum flex of our spine forward. This is spine lengthening. Allow gravity to work on the spine, decompressing it. It's not all about the backs of the legs. That's icing on the cake. Okay, we can do the same thing in forward fold that we did in downward dog. But bring your attention to the tops of your thighs. Just imagine that they're relaxing, softening. You should, you may feel a little release in your lower back. That allows you to decompress the spine even more. Maximum flexion of the spine. Mini inversion, bringing blood to the face and the head. One more round of breath here and forward fold. And then bending the knees, 
push yourself up. Let your back be rounded until you get your waistline in place. Bring the shoulders back and down. Let's stay here for a moment. Get acclimated to being upright. Now, um, a couple notes before we start. So we are going to do the moon salutation, Chandra Namaskar. And we're going to do it uh, all the way through twice, okay? We want to approach the salutation in a very calm, meditative way. So it may seem very slow to you. That's the point, okay? So if you're antsy and you want to ramp up your uh, practice, you know how to do it, okay? But I'm going to be following a fairly meditative, meditation in motion approach to the moon salutation, okay? So we start out in mountain, one of my favorite poses, lower body, very active. Don't clench the buttocks, engage them, but don't clench them, tailbone down to the mat. Let's inhale up and bring those hands into Anjali Mudra, prayer position. Mountain can be very, very meditative. If you're stable, you can close your eyes, recall your intention. And I want you to imagine that in your mouth is a soft, round, glowing moon lozenge. Lo lozenge. You know, like a cough lozenge. Move that lozenge on an angle to the lower back of the head. It's called the bindu. Keep the image of the moon right there in the back of the head. Bring the arms down. Take another breath in and out. Now you may want to open up your stance a little bit. It's up to you. We're going to inhale the left arm up. Come on over to the right. Open up that left side body. Try and keep this guy not too scrunched. Energy streaming out the fingertips. Inhaling and exhaling. On the next inhale, inhale the right arm up. Come on over to the left. Open up that right side body. Get some space between the ribs. Let your arm be active. Let the right arm be active. You can look up. You can look down. You can look forward. And inhaling up, coming to center. And exhale. For the next pose in the sequence, you may want to adapt an even wider stance, toes out for goddess. Thinking about goddess as meditation in motion, poetry in motion, letting the knees travel out as the arms come up into goddess. Again, feeling that female energy pointing the tailbone down toward the mat. Fingers are bright. Okay? They're not saggy and, and mushy. Okay? If you need to come up, come on up. We're just going to stay down here for one more round of breath.
And then again, simultaneously straighten the legs and the arms coming right out from the shoulders. Five pointed star. Another one of my favorite postures, engage muscular energy in those arms. Hug the muscles to the bone. Legs nice and active, press out to the outer edges of the feet. The reason I say that is to one, engage the legs and two, um, round the arches up. You don't want to have fallen arches, right? Leaving the left foot about where it is, point the right toes to the front. Now I had to adjust my, adjust your back leg so that your knee is not torqued, okay? Bring the arms back out. And on an inhale, reach right. Keep the legs straight and just tip over into triangle. Okay. Now it's really cool to be able to put your hand all the way down to the mat, but we want to keep this hip open. Okay. But draw the shoulder blades together. Draw the shoulder blades together. Legs are active. You can look down. I don't like to look up, it hurts my neck a little bit. So you can look down, but bring your attention to your shoulders. Where are they? Don't punch them forward. Keep the shoulders away from the ears. On your next exhale, bring the left hand down, pivot to the short edge of your mat. You're gonna have to pivot that back leg Coming into pyramid, both legs are straight. Find some length in that spine. On an exhale, bring the body closer to the right thigh. Come on down as shallow or as deep as you choose. If you have your blocks or you want to put your fingertips on the mat, that's completely up to you. Feel that stretch in the front leg, standing runner stretch or pyramid. Can even flow a little bit here, halfway lift. And on an exhale, come on down. Don't have to, okay? Halfway lift. Shoulders back, lengthen the spine, and come on down. Very gently now, bend that front knee. And place that left leg behind you. Now you can keep your fingertips on the mat if you want to, with your belly contacting the thigh. Or you can come up. Stretching the psoas and the left leg isometric exercising for the right leg. Keep those shoulders down and back. Couple rounds of breath right here. And then runner's lunge. You can put the knee down if you need to. If your knee is up, press that heel back. Stay upright. Try to divide your weight between the front leg and the back leg. Now very gently reach down. Support yourself on the mat near your right foot. And pivot. Both legs, both uh, feet to the front. Come on over to the right. Bend that right leg. Come on up on the heel of the left leg. Okay. Couple rounds of breath here. Flex the toes toward the midline of the body. Feel that in the adductors, the hip flexors. 
Now you can flow back and forth, but what we're gonna do is the next uh, pose in the sequence, which is just shifting the focus. Now the left leg is bent, the right leg is straight. Again, heel into the mat, focus on that adductor, and support yourself. Bring the shoulders back and down, support yourself with your fingertips on the mat. Nice deep breathing here. Remember, stay away from ujjayi breathing, just deep breathing. One more round of breath here. And then gently orienting the toes to the other side of the mat. And they have to Make sure your legs are stable, runners lunge on the other side. Okay, so I'm choosing to keep my knee up. You can bring your knee down. When the knee is up, we're pressing that heel back. Again, trying to distribute the weight so that we're not dumping into this quadricep. You can do, uh, Sabine had us in this pose yesterday and she was dipping down and coming up. You can do that if you want. <laughs> I'm not going to. Okay. Nice and gently now, straightening that front leg, orienting that back leg to where you need it to be so that that right knee is not torqued. Facing the short end of the mat. Inhaling and lengthening the spine. Exhaling and coming, coming over that left leg. I'm gonna use my blocks here again, um, because they're handy, okay? So whenever you've got your hands on the mat or your blocks, you want to make sure that your wrists are under the shoulders, okay? So even when you're using your blocks, the same thing applies. Again, coming down as far as you want to, as far as you can, maybe you're gonna challenge yourself a little bit today. Nice deep breaths here, in and out the nose. I'm going to keep my blocks here for triangle. We're going to transition into triangle on the left side. So in triangle, both legs are straight. The hips are open, stacked on top of each other. Okay. I'm going to come up so that I can align myself better. Okay. I'm going to reach left and then just windmill, windmill my arms. Remembering to bring those shoulder blades together, down and back, keeping the shoulder away from the ear. So I can't even go down without compromising the pose. I've got my block on the highest level here. I don't want my, my uh, hip to hinge in. I want my shoulders down my back in triangle. Come on out whenever you need to. Hug those muscles in the arms to the bone. And gently bending that right leg, coming back into five pointed star. Squeeze the muscles in the arms. Legs are active. Press the outer edges of the feet into the mat. Stay here for two rounds of breath. Let those fingers be active. 
up the tailbone just a little. And again, see if you can simultaneously bend the legs and come to cactus arms for goddess. Come on, maybe you can come a little lower now. Maybe not, it's up to you. You can be here, you can be here, it doesn't matter. Feel your energy, direct your energy toward those challenges or those pieces of resistance that we're going to, going to run into. We face each challenge with grace. And then coming up, coming back into mountain. Maybe shake out the legs first. Coming back into mountain, hands are nice and relaxed here. Shoulders back and down, chin level with the floor. Let's stay here for two rounds of breath. And then take a little break for water. <laughs> okay? All right, I need water. Oh, okay. So let's see if we can maintain a flowing sort of approach to Chandra Namaskar. Okay. Hang on, just want to check and see if there's any trouble in paradise. Okay, cool. Okay. So we're gonna try and flow meditation in motion. And I'll try to make my diet my monologue kind of a flow. Not so much of a start and stop, but just one thing that I would caution is just uh, take care of your knees and your shoulders. So let's start again in mountain and visualize that bindu, that moon and that light in the back of your head. Broadening the stance or not. Inhaling the left arm up and bending to the right. Chest open, armpit open. And inhaling, right arm up, right side body opens. And coming to center, letting the toes come out simultaneously, come down, bring the arms up, tail going toward the mat, chest open, feel the energy of goddess. One more round of breath here. On your next inhale, come up into five-pointed star. Let those muscles be close to the bone. Shoulders down, abs engaged. Orienting the feet, the right triangle. And 
as always, shoulder blades coming together, left side of the body open, and look up or down. Feel the strength in the legs. One more breath here, in and out. And on the next inhale, orient them both feet forward. Coming into pyramid, inhaling, lengthening the spine. Exhaling, holding over the front leg. Softening the top of that quadricep, letting the lower back disengage. Take nice deep breaths here. Shoulders away from the ears. On the next inhale, bending the right leg forward, placing the left leg back. Coming up into runner's lunge and bring your knee to the mat. Tuck that tailbone. Stretch the psoas on the left. Nice deep breaths here. One more round of breath. As we turn to the, to the front with the right leg bent and the left toes pointing toward the ceiling in a flex. Extended leg squat. Push that heel right into the mat. And switching sides, left leg bent, right leg out straight. Press that right heel into the mat. Open up that inner thigh. And transitioning to runner's lunge, orienting those legs so that you're stable and safe. Lift the, that back knee. If you have the knee off the mat, lift the knee, press the heel back. Right so as stretch, shoulders away from the ears. A bit of a balance challenge here on the, when you're on the ball of your foot. On the next inhale, straightening that left leg, inhaling the spine long, and exhaling over the left leg. Coming down as far as you want. Feeling that stretch all the way from the ankle to the hip. Nice deep breaths here. Coming up now, orienting ourselves for left triangle. Both legs are straight. Watch those knees. Hands out to the side, reach left. And just cartwheel. Bring those shoulder blades together. Even when we're in a position like this, we need to bring the shoulder blades down and back. Press the feet into the mat, legs very active here. Opening up that right side body, 
getting some space between the ribs. Couple rounds of breath right here. And letting the right arm pull us along, facing the front, facing the long side of your mat, shoulders down, chin level with the floor, five-pointed star for the last time. Lift your kneecaps up. All the muscles in the body lightly engaged, very active. Next, inhale, bring your arms into cactus, floating down into goddess. Hands facing forward in a receiving mode. Feel the energy. One more. Round of breath here in Goddess. And straightening the legs, bringing the arms down, coming back into Mountain. Maybe shake the legs out a little bit, taking a moment to notice how you feel. Nice deep breaths here, really expand the chest. And inhaling the arms up, exhaling to the right. Inhaling to center, exhaling to the left. And center. Arms down. Okay. Let's go down to the mat. On our back. Well, no, wait one minute. Don't go down to your back yet. Let's just bring the soles of the feet together here. Okay. Doing a little butterfly. Now, if you can't reach your toes and keep your spine long, okay, don't hold on to your toes. Hold on to your ankles or the arches of your feet. Now, you can stay here or if you want. You can inhale, lengthen up. And as we exhale, come down with a flat back, hinging right from the hips. Maybe using the elbows to keep the legs down, opening up the hips, opening, stretching the adductors, looking down at the floor. When you come to a spot of resistance, just pause for a moment. Pause for a moment, relax for a moment. And inhale again, lengthen out of that waistband. Press that crown right up to the ceiling, maybe where the wall and the ceiling meet. And on the exhale, perhaps we can flex a little bit farther. Lastly, letting the head come right down, chin into the chest. Let that cervical spine be long, getting some space between those tiny little bones in that spine. Wonderful, wonderful stretch here. And on your next inhale, come on up. Hmm. And now, come to your back. Bring the feet, soles of the feet onto the mat. Bring your shoulder blades down. 
and just do some uh, pelvic rocking here. So tipping the tailbone down and up or up and down. Okay. Again, uh, it's like a supine cat and cow. Wonderful, wonderful for spinal flexibility, for keeping our postures nice and straight, nice and stable, nice and mobile. Stability, flexibility, mobility, that's why we're here. And come to center, make sure your heels are as close to your buttocks as you can get, roll your shoulders under. <laughs> we're gonna come up into bridge, pressing into the soles of the feet. Let the chin come into the chest. Don't move your head in this position. Feel your quads, feel your hamstrings. If you can, I can't do it with my shoulders, but if you can roll your shoulders under and clasp your hands below your sacrum, you can try that. Okay. I just want you to take a moment and feel this pose. Where can you soften? There's not much, right? We can soften our arms. We can soften and let our chin come into the chest. Now come down really slowly, one vertebrae at a time, activating those active pressure points in the back. Feel that luxurious rolling down of the spine. Let the buttocks come down. Do a couple more pelvic tilts. If you want to spread your legs a little bit here. And then bring your feet out to the edges of the mat. And just, again, windshield wiper from side to side. This helps us extract any tension from the lower back. Side to side here. And bring the right leg over the left leg. So we're not, we're not here, we're, we don't have our ankle above our knee. We've got the knees together. And then bring those legs over to the right. Try to keep both shoulders on the mat. You're up on your right buttock, feel the hip on the left. Two rounds of breath and spinal twist. Now bringing your knees back up, come to the left. Use your left hand to kind of anchor your legs over here. Just notice where you feel the sensations. And again, two rounds of breath here. Come on up and unwind. Left leg over the right leg. Just come down to the left. Watch that right hip kind of on the inside of the right foot. Maybe getting a little IT band stretch on the right. Couple rounds of breath. And then bring the legs up. Come on over to the right and bend your knees a little bit more for a deeper stretch. Just be careful. Watch the sensations in your back. On your next inhale, come to center. And unwinding those feet. Let's bring the right knee into the chest again. And push your left leg along the mat now. 
body is nice and warm, nice and supple. Bring the shoulders away from the ears, flex the right foot. Bring that right leg down, bring the left leg up, flexing the foot, bringing the thigh right into the abdomen. Send that right leg out straight. It's too much for you to keep the sole of the right foot on the mat. Pressing a little bit more now, deep, even pressure, no jerking, no bouncing. No isometric. Isometrics for the arms. And release that leg. Bring the knees out again to the edges of the mat. Just windshield wiper back and forth. And get ready for Final meditation for Shavasana. Here's my, I got a little womb meditation. Taking this opportunity to relax, to Congratulate to thank yourself for taking care of you, for aligning our energy with the moon. Just soften. Soften and relax. Integrating everything that you felt, everything that you've observed today in your practice. from this magical place of surrender. Feel yourself lifting from the earth. The mystical energy draws you forward into the night air. You feel yourself moving across the earth as if magnetic forces are dancing beneath keeping you from touching down. The force is taking you to an outdoor clearing where the dark, sparkling sky sprinkles starlight down into your being. See the huge, bright moon hanging above you in the sky. It's glowing bright, and you can see its contours. The light of the moon is glowing all around you, lighting up every creature, all the landscape, as clear as daylight. The glow of the moon warms you from the outside in. Allow yourself to be fully enveloped by the moon's light. Allow yourself to be showered by its positive energies. Absorb as much energy as you need from the moon. Set your true desire of your heart. Focus. Centeredness. Begin to send the moon's energy from within you to your desire. Surround your happiness with the moon's light until your aura shines. Detach from your body and mind as you relax deeper. Each deep breath takes you deeper and deeper into relaxation and contemplation. Now 
bathing completely in the moonlight. Raise your focus to the moment. Feel her energies blessing your hips. Feel her cool, clear energy enliven your spirit. And her purifying energy manifest your desire for happiness. Breathing in the stillness, breathing out tension. Breathing in the stillness, breathing out tension. Start to deepen your breath. Just take a moment and recall your intention. Feel the effects of your practice today. Scan your body, noticing any sensations, and feeling the energy swirl in the body. Rock your head from side to side, make movements with fingers and toes. And come to a seated position or take a nap on your mat. Doesn't matter, we don't have to pack up and go anywhere. And if you're in a seated position, Inhale, raise the arms, gather chi, energy from the universe. Flatten the palms toward the body and wash that chi all over the body. Fresh energy, replacing stale energy, others people, other people's energy that we do not need. Again, inhaling, bringing the hands to heart center, Anjali Mudra, prayer position shoulders down. Thanks so much for coming.
how many to Zoom, how many to class, and how we need it tied to the practice today. Namaste. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks, Thanks Kathy. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Kathy. Thank Have a great you. day. Thank you. Bye. Hey, Barbie. Hey, Kathy. Hey, Nancy. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. Kathy. Barbie. Hi, yeah. guys. I'm getting my it's hair Kathy. cut today. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's so nice to see everybody. Yeah. It is. Sharon. I didn't even see your name there. Where is she? I'm, there she here. is. Here. Oh, okay. I, was there. I can't see you, but yeah. Oh, oh there you yeah, are. Hey, Sharon. You want to see me? I did a whole class. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah that was I'm awesome. Here. Here. All right. and, and I got a room with a view. And... <laughs> I had tons of people come through the most gorgeous engineer you've ever seen. He must have filled the door and I asked him to come back at noon. I had yoga to do. <laughs> I know I've, I've started putting a sign on my front door now because I'm just afraid somebody's going to ring my doorbell or. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. guys, got to run because right. I'm getting my hair caught. Hey, hey. Kathy, hey, thank have you. a great day, Thanks. everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye. Another great class. Bye.